Welcome back to Understanding the Gospel. My name is Lee Robinson. I'm from Citywide Baptist Church, uh, located at 325 Broad Street in New London. Uh, This is Understanding the Gospel, a 12-week teaching series uh, designed to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, Most people know the gospel. Uh, The word gospel, it means good news. And that good news is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 3 and 4 in the Bible. Uh, Very simply, the, the gospel is that Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah, the Old Testament spoke about the one who should come. Uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, that he would die for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Uh, that is the gospel. Most people know that, but uh, what, we're, what our aim is is not to just know that, but to understand uh, why that is so important. And that's exactly what we've been doing. This is week number 12, and actually we're, um, we're going to have 13 weeks, so our first week was kind of an introduction Uh, So we'll have this uh, lesson, and then next week we'll finish up the series. Um, And uh, tonight, what we're going to be talking about, uh, we'll get into in a few minutes, uh, we're going to be talking about evidences of being born again. Uh, Has anybody ever asked you the question, uh, do you know for sure you're on your way to heaven? Uh, That's a a great question, not uh, maybe so, not a hope so. Do you know for sure if you were to die tonight, Uh, without a question, without a shadow of a doubt at all, that you would spend eternity uh, in heaven with God? Or is there any kind of doubt at all? Do you know for sure? And most people would say, well, uh, nobody nobody can know for sure. I mean, uh, I hope so, you know, obviously, uh, maybe, I I think so, but nobody can know for sure. Uh, Well, the the Bible teaches us quite the opposite. In fact, uh, the Bible tells us that we can be quite sure Uh, whether we're going to spend eternity with God or whether we won't spend eternity with him. So God has already told us, and there's evidences, there's things that we can look at in our own lives, there's things we can look at in other people's lives that is evidence or proof to show whether we are the children of God, whether we have eternal life already living inside of us or not. Um, But before we get into that, uh, I just want to do kind of a review of the things that we've taught. We've done a, a, a lot of teaching And um, through the teaching, uh, basically what we've gone through is we've been breaking down the gospel, understanding each part, why it's so important. And we started with uh, the bad news. The word gospel, it means good news. Jesus said in Mark chapter 1 and verse number 15, uh, repent and believe the gospel. This is the message of Jesus. The first message that he came preaching, the main message that he came preaching was this right here in Mark chapter 1 and verse 15. Uh, the word gospel means good news. We, so, we start by seeing the bad news. What, what is the bad news? And uh, the bad news is the fact that uh, God created us, and because he created us, he is our authority, uh, and, and him as our authority, he, he sets the rules for us. Uh, he's given us a conscience. He's instilled within us the, the awareness of no, uh, the knowledge of good and evil, that we have a conscience, and because of that, uh, we all were uh, accountable to him. We're not like uh, plants or, or birds that don't have accountability to God. They're not moral creatures. But us as human beings, and you know this, we know uh, the difference between right and wrong. God instilled that in us. He gave us his laws, particularly, particularly the Ten Commandments. Uh, those are God's rules. I have children. Uh, I lay down the rules for my children, and they're uh, obl- obligated to keep those rules. If they keep them, they're good. If they, if they break them, if they disobey them, they're bad. Um, somebody else does not make rules for my children. Another parent doesn't uh, unless I give them the authority to. So uh, God, by virtue of the fact that he created us, means that he has the, the power, the authority to make the rules, and he did make the rules, the Ten Commandments. Uh, we spent a whole lesson going uh, through those Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, honor thy father and thy mother, etc. Um, thou shalt have no other gods before me, God said. And uh, we saw from that, we jumped into another um, lesson um, about being a good person. Are, are you a good person? And what it means to be good. And, and the bad news is this, is that uh, God is absolutely good, meaning he is perfect in every single way, no darkness at all. He's, he's sinless, holy. The bad news being we are not. We've fallen way short. We've broken his laws so many times, and we saw not only do we just do bad things, but the reason why we do bad things is because we are bad in our hearts. Jesus said, uh, it's not the things that come into a man that defile him, but the things that come out of the heart. Uh, we are corrupted. Sin was mixed in our DNA. We're born with a sinful nature. We sin because we are sinners. So this, this creates 
not only the fact that we were guilty before God, uh, we're underneath the condemnation of his law, but it goes deeper than that in the fact that we could never, ever do anything uh, to make ourselves right in the sight of God before his law. In fact, because our nature is corrupted, the longer we live, the more that we become in, in more condemnation before his law. Uh, so the bad news tonight is uh, that there is a God and he's holy and he has given us laws and we've completely gone astray. All we like sheep have gone astray. We're hopeless. We're without God in this world and it's appointed for man once to die and after this the judgment. The Bible says that all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, uh, that there's none righteous before God. Uh, so uh, the wisdom and uh, the good news, the, the wisdom is, is to Find a way. What, what is the way? How can I be right with God? And uh, the good news is that although we are so fallen and corrupt and away from God, that his desire is not to punish us. That's not his will. His will is that all men would be saved and would come to the knowledge of the truth, that none would perish, but all would come to repentance. Uh, we saw about God's mercy, that he loves this world, even while we were yet sinners. What he did was something so amazing. It's, it's something that no man would come up with. It's not a religion. It's not a man-made thing. It's the, it's the plan of the eternal God that the Lamb of God, the Son, Jesus Christ, was slain before the foundations of the world. And why was he slain? Not for any uh, wrong that he had done. He who knew no sin, he became sin for us. Jesus Christ, the sinless one, the eternal Son of God, became flesh. He took on flesh, went to the cross of Calvary, became sin for us. The Father turned his back on his own Son, uh, poured out his wrath. He took the cup filled with God's wrath and drank the whole thing. Eternal separation from God, uh, physical death, spiritual death that he endured for all of our sins, the sins of all men of all ages, he took on himself on that cross. So praise God that there's a payment. Uh, I stand in debt before God because of all my sins. Jesus, he paid that debt for me. Not only did he die for my sins, but he rose from the dead so that we might be justified. If Jesus, if he just died for us, how would we know that uh, he had the power to forgive sins? How would we know that the Father was pleased with that sacrifice? We have assurance. God has given um, assurance to all men in that he raised up Jesus from the dead. Jesus ascended. Uh, he rose from the dead. His, he, he said, destroy this temple, speaking of his body, and I will raise it up three days later. He raised his body up, ascended. He's seated today at the right hand of God to be our lawyer, to be our advocate, uh, our mediator, our intercessor, so that when we appear before God for forgiveness, when we come with repentance, we're not left alone there to deal with our sin. We have an advocate. We have someone to reach to, Jesus Christ, that his blood uh, is the payment for our sins. And when we call upon him, we repent and believe the plan, the, the work that Jesus did, um, God's promise is that we are justified, that, that God the judge, he declares, you are forgiven, your slate is clean. He takes the, all of our sins and he blots them out. out of, he takes his book and writes with his eternal pen, he writes our names in the Lamb's book of life. And uh, we are born again by the Spirit of God. That's what we talked about last week, uh, that it's not uh, salvation, eternal life. is not the work that we can do. It's not going to church and performing religious duties and serving God and keeping these laws that it would never save you. It's got to be the work of God, a new creation done by God in the hearts of those who repent of their sins and believe in the Savior, Jesus Christ. We're born, we're born again into his family. Uh, so praise God. Um, we, we've, we've, that's the good news. We've covered the gospel of Jesus. And um, that brings us to what we're talking about tonight is uh, maybe you've been watching, but maybe not. Maybe this is the first time you've been watching. But... Um, uh, to, to begin this one, what the, I'll put the question out there again. Uh, whether you've been watching the show or not, uh, do you know tonight? Uh, you say, I understand. I understand that Jesus died for my sins. I understand that he, he rose from the dead and, and he's the Savior. And, um, and, and I believe in him. You know, if you ask a, uh, someone, a Catholic person tonight, do you believe in Jesus? Of course. They're going to say, well, of course, he died for our sins. He rose from the dead. The Trinity they believe in all these things. Of course I believe in Jesus. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, you ask, uh, do you believe in Jesus? Of course I believe in Jesus. Many people believe in Jesus, um, but unfortunately, many times when, when we talk to people and we ask that simple question, do you, do you know for sure that you're on your way to heaven? Are you completely sure 
that you are a child of God, uh, that your sins are gone, that they've been forgiven through the blood of Jesus, that you're in a right standing before God, and no matter how disobedient you are for the rest of your life, you're still a child of God, and you will die and, and be at one with God, that you'll be equal, you'll be holy as he is holy, and he'll receive you into heaven. Um, can you say in the depths of your heart tonight that you have that assurance? If there's anything less uh, than, than that, if there's any doubt whatsoever, uh, that's a good evidence right there that you've not been born again. Uh, you look at a family, uh, me and my children, and you ask, um, you know, you ask them, are, are, you, are, are you the dad and are you the children? Are you, are you people? And are you a family? There's no question. Uh, they know. It's, it's been a daily thing. They, they know they're my children. They know my voice. They know I'm theirs, even if they're disobedient. It doesn't make them terrified. They, they, don't, they know I'm not going to just kick them out and never talk to them again. They know. They have assurance. They're the children of God. Uh, do you have that assurance tonight? Um, and, and if you don't, uh, go back and, and think about the things that we had just spoken about, that eternal life is not something that we do. It's, it's through Jesus Christ. It's through repenting of our sins and placing our faith in the one who did all of the work. Go back to him and plead for salvation. Um, kind of specifically who um, we're wanting to uh, really uh, speak to this evening are those who maybe think that they do know that they have eternal life, or you say, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm all set. Uh, we want to see what the evidences are. Um, how can somebody know that they're on their way to heaven? I want to start with this scripture in, in 1 John chapter 5. Listen, listen to what the Bible says here. Uh, in 1 John chapter 5, it's, it, says, it starts in verse number 9. He says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Uh, th this witness, it's inside of us that will show us something. What is this witness showing us? It says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. This is a completed action. He's saying already, the Apostle John, and he's writing to the people. He calls them little children. Some of these were new believers. He says, God has given to us eternal life. It's already in our possession. And we know because we have the Son and because he is inside of us testifying that we have him in us and we have eternal life. Listen to what he says. This is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son, speaking of Jesus, hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Uh, John is saying, he's writing to these Christians, and he's saying, I'm writing to you so that you might know that you have eternal life. There doesn't need to be any doubt whatsoever. I want you to know that you have eternal life, no doubts whatsoever. Okay, so it's clear from, from the scriptures, and this is just one place, uh, we can go many, many other different directions to show that we can know that we have eternal life. Uh, another thing we could go to is the Bible um, over and over again talks about being saved. We talked about what it means to be saved, uh, salvation, the Bible writers, um, and not only for themselves, but who they spoke to. Uh, they, they said that they were already saved. Um, uh, many of people in uh, false religions, uh, like Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons, even Catholics, uh, they will they'll use the scripture that says, but he that endureth to the end must be saved. And they apply that to the gospel, um, and they take it out of context from what it's talking about. And they say, well, you can't know that you're saved because you have to endure to the end to be saved. Um, but when we look at the rest of scriptures, many, many, many times, the overwhelming majority of times, other than that one verse, they say, we are saved. We are saved already in the context of the gospel of salvation. How did they know that they were saved when they were still alive? They hadn't endured to the end yet. They were already saved. How did they know that? What did they have that other people don't have that would make them doubt? Okay, so it's clear. We know that we can have eternal life. Um, what are the evidences, though? What, if I look at my life and say, I, I believe that I'm a Christian, I believe I'm a child of God, and I'm on my way to heaven, um, what, what should be evident? And uh, what, we're going to get into that right now. 
And uh, 2 Corinthians, I want to read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, and verse number 5, and see a scripture to springboard into this. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, and verse number 5, listen to this. He says, very simply, uh, the Apostle Paul says, examine yourselves, whither ye be in the faith. And he was speaking to a group of people who had already placed their faith in Jesus. And um, I believe that God would send out this warning to people today, that perhaps they, they say, I already believe in Jesus. Well, God says right here, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye, not that you, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Uh, now, what does this mean? He says, examine yourselves, or in other words, uh, test. Test your life. Prove it that you're a child of God. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. He says, don't you know that Jesus Christ is in you um, unless you're a reprobate? What does the word reprobate mean? It basically means something that fails the test. So if I was in a factory at the line and here comes all the products, they're coming through and I'm examining them. I'm seeing, um, have they been produced right? And those that have been produced right, they meet the specs, they're, they're according to the design, they go. The other ones, uh, this is not good. It's reprobate. I, I discard it. It did not pass the test. It does not go in. Now, this is what the challenge is for us. What we need to do is go to God's word as our, uh, our standard and look at God's word and say, is my life, is, do, I, do I meet the standard um, to be a child of God? Or if I, if, I put my, if I place myself up against God's word, does my life fall short of God's standard, and am I a reprobate? Do I not know him? What is God's word showing in me? What do I see in my own life? Is, is my life showing me that I'm a child of God, or is it showing me that I'm not a child of God? Now, uh, again, before we get into these things, um, good works do not save you. What, what we're not doing this evening is we're not looking at our lives and saying, hey, am, am I good enough to, you know, do I, am I good enough to get in? No, we've already shown that we're not saved by our good works but only by our faith in Christ. However, if we are born again, there will be things that will be produced from that. Repentance and belief happens in my heart and my mind. I'm saved inside of me. But if I'm truly born again, there will be a difference. And there will be certain things that are evident in my life. If those things are not evident, that's a good sign for myself that I do not know him. And I need to examine, I need to search and be saved. Um, now, what is, okay, so what is the evidence? And I want to uh, focus on three different areas, but in short, it really comes down to one thing. Those who have truly been born again by God, they love the things that God loves, and they hate the things that God hates. They love what God loves, and they hate what God hates. And there's some things in the Bible that, that God loves um, more than other things. There, there's th some things that God has a, a special love for. We can almost say s certain people that God has a love for. Um, who are the people that God loves? Who does God have a special love um, for? And who does he not have a special love for? And who, who, who does God hate? Okay, now I want to break these down into three areas. The first one is that God loves the word. And the word being Jesus, also the Bible, but God loves his son, Jesus. And if you've been born of God, you will love Jesus. The second one is the brethren or the children of God. Uh, the people who have truly been born of God. God loves his children. If we've been born of God, we will love God's children. Um, God is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He love, God loves holiness. And the Holy Spirit is the one that is in those who have been born again. Our third area is that if you've been born of God, you will love holiness. You will love the Holy Spirit and you'll love what the Holy Spirit does in your life, that he's striving to make you pure and clean and holy. And uh, let's get into each one of these things. Number one, uh, God loves the word. Um, and we're breaking the word, not to be confusing, but we're breaking the word into two parts. The, when the Bible talks about the word of God, uh, an easy way to understand this is that uh, the Word of God in written form is the Bible. This is the Word of God written down. The Word of God in human form is the person of Jesus Christ. Why, do we, why are both of those called the Word of God? Well, um, as a person, we have uh, thoughts, and the way that we communicate those thoughts is through, through many different ways, but the most express way that we communicate our feelings and our ideas and our desires is through words. 
ultimately in a person with word. And that's why the word of God is called the word of God. God is a God of communication. He's a God of revelation. He wants to manifest himself to people. And he did through writing his book to us and by sending his son in the person so that we can know God. The Bible says that Jesus, he came to exegete the father or to explain him. Okay, so if you've been born of God, you will have a special love for Jesus and for the Bible, for the Word of God. Let's talk about Jesus for a second. Um, I want to read this scripture in the book of John, chapter number 8. Listen to how clear this is. This is when Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, uh, the Jewish uh, religious leaders, and they were trying to uh, basically show that we're the children of God, and the reason why we're the children of God is because we're the seed of Abraham. We're, we're just, we've, been born, we've always been the children of God. We're the Jewish people. You know, we're the children of God. And um, Jesus is challenging their thinking. And um, what he says to them in uh, John chapter 8 in verse um, number 42, it says, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. So the, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they did not love Jesus. They hated Jesus. The reason why they hated Jesus was because he was a threat um, to their authority. They lifted themselves up as the authority in the nation. Um, they wanted all the people to look at them as the ones that were righteous from God and all these things. They didn't want someone telling them that they were a sinner and that they needed to come to this poor Jesus of Nazareth for salvation. They didn't want to admit that. They didn't want to admit that he was the son of God. They didn't want to humble themselves before him and recognize that he was the way. So Jesus corrects them and he says, no, if you were truly from God, if you were his, if you were his children, you would love me. Um, you cannot be neutral with Jesus. Either, either you love him or you hate him. If you think that you're okay with him and okay with other gods, you don't know who he really is saying he is. Jesus is saying, I am your creator. You, ha you can't breathe without me. You can't live without me. I came into the world. I died for your sins. And unless you humble yourself and repent and trust in me, you will have no life. You will spend eternity in hell. That's the Jesus of the Bible. That's the, the real living Jesus. So that Jesus, um, do you love him or do you hate him? There's no neutral, gr no, no, neutral ground. I remember uh, one time I, I knew a man in North Carolina who was a, a Hindu. He's from India and a very sweet guy, but he showed me, uh, he had a, a dial with the sun in the middle. The sun goes around um, the sun in the sky and I, all around the, the dial was the names of different gods. And one of those names was Jesus over here. And every morning he said, I take this dial and I spin the, the little arrow and it goes around, around whatever God it lands on. That's the God that I pray to. Uh, and okay, and I told him, I said, uh, no, I said, this, this isn't good. Is it not good? He said, what you need to do is take all these other names off of here and put Jesus in the middle and just spin the thing. And so it lands on Jesus every day. Either you have that Jesus or don't include that Jesus in there at all. They're mutually exclusive. And I could tell that it didn't sit well with him. In the world, they don't, they don't like this Jesus that says, I am the only way, the only truth, the only life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Well, how do you feel about Jesus? Do you love him or do you hate him? If you hate him, that's a sign that you've not been born of God. Um, you, may even, you may even say that you believe in him. But what happens when uh, one of your family members who people look at as a Jesus freak and they come and all they want to talk about is Jesus. All they want to talk about is the Bible. And you have this thing, he's, can you stop talking about Jesus? Can you stop talking about the Bible? Why is that? Well, listen to what Jesus said. In John 8, in uh, verse 43, he said, Why do you not understand my speech? Even, be, even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. The reason why you don't want to hear about this Jesus, you don't want to hear about this word, is because you don't know him. You're not of him, you're of your father the devil, Darkness and sin is to the core of your being. That is what you're born of. And that's what you love and what you're drawn to because that's your nature. This is not meant, uh, these things are not meant out of a, a heart of hatred. This is meant out of a heart of love. 
Um, God wants all people to come to know him. He doesn't want them to be abused by sin. He doesn't want them to be deceived into thinking that they're okay, that they'll live this life and die and be, be glorious and rewarded and everything. God doesn't want that. And we don't want that either. We don't want to see people deceived. Okay, so examine yourself this evening. Do you love Jesus? Do you love his word? If not, um, we need to run to Jesus and be saved. Um, Jesus said in John chapter 15 and verse 18, he's talking to his disciples and he, and he says to them, he said, if the, world, if the world hates you, he said, they're not hating you. They're hating, they hated me first, um, but the reason why they hate you is because they hated me and I'm going to be inside of you and, and you're going to become like me. Uh, the world hates Jesus and many of people who claim to be followers of Jesus, they hate Jesus. They can't stand talking about Jesus. They want to talk about anything else except Jesus. That's a good sign that we're not the children of God. Um, in Matthew chapter 10, in verse number 32, Jesus uh, spoke about, I won't read the scriptures, but um, he basically said, whoever confesses me before men, uh, him will I confess before my father. Whoever denies me before men, uh, I will also deny before my father. And then he goes on to say, you know, think not that I've come to send peace on the earth. Um, I've not come to send peace, but a sword to bring uh, variance, you know, division, between father and mother and uh, sister, brother. And basically what he's saying is Jesus is saying, I'm not coming um, to dis bring confusion to the world or hatred. He's saying, no, I I'm coming to bring truth. And truth will divide those um, from who want truth and who don't truth. And those who follow me into the truth, even their family members are going to hate them because it's going to be reproved to them or rebuked to them. Um, and what we need to do is we need to love Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the only living Jesus, and the only Savior to stand on his side and to confess his name and to love him publicly and declare his name. These are, these are evidences that we're the children of God or not. Um, so not only should there be a love for Jesus, but there should also in your life, there should be a love for the Bible, a love for the word of God. Um, and we'll go over to uh, 1 Peter chapter number 1 and 2 to see this. Um, what is your relationship like with the Bible? Uh, I know that before I came to Jesus, before I was born again, um, the Bible was just, and Jesus was just non-existent to me. It, it, it didn't even matter. I, I knew that the Bible existed, didn't care, didn't, you know, whatever. Um, and many people, many people who uh, are taught religion and they're, they grow up in a church, whatever kind of religion it was or whatever, um, they're more familiar with the Bible. But what is your heart towards the Bible? Um, is it just kind of another book that, you, you know, I have to read or, you know, I, I don't understand it. I read the Bible. It just sounds like a bunch of nonsense to me, old ancient book and everything, just collecting dust. Or is the Bible more like your, your daily food that you think, you think about the Bible every day, you run to it. It's almost like Every day I get hungry for physical food and I just find myself drawn to it. I don't have to make myself do it. I just run to it. Um, is this, this is an evidence of whether you're saved or not. If you've been born of God, you will love his word. Now look at, look at these scriptures because it's very, it's very telling. 1 Peter chapter 1 uh, says this in verse 23. It says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Um, the Bible calls the Word of God the seed, the, the seed that's planted. When you hear the gospel for the first time, or when you hear the gospel, the, the Word of God is being planted inside of you. When you receive that Word into your heart and it's fertilized and conceived, there's a new creation inside of me. I've been born again by this Word. It says in verse uh, 25, uh, But the Word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the Word which by the gospel is preached unto you. How did I hear about Jesus? How did I learn that I was a sinner and that I needed a Savior? It all came from the Word of God. Uh, somebody came to me and taught me the Word of God. I received it. I was born of that Word. And now it says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, As newborn babes, uh, born again, desire the sincere milk of the Word, the, the unadulterated, the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. Uh, there's, when, a, when a baby is born, and this is the illustration that the Bible's given us, uh, what does a baby do when the baby is born? Um, it basically cries and, and eats and sleeps, and that's it. And, and those are pictures for us that what happens in a person's life when they're truly born again by God. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll cry out to God. They'll have all of a sudden this, 
uh, prayer life will be will be opened up to them, and they'll they'll cry out to God. And what what will they? They'll hunger. They'll cry out for His Word. Teach me Your Word. They'll be drawn. They'll find them even if they're not taught that um, you need to read the Bible. They'll find themselves in it. Uh, and and yeah, they'll they'll make a mess and everything. They'll sleep the rest, but they'll cry out for the Word of God. And uh, this should happen in your life. You should be able to look at a time and say, you know. I knew I was a sinner and I came to Christ and something was new was born in me, a desire for God's word. If that's never happened, um, then that's a good chance that the word has not been received by your heart and that you've not conceived and you've not been born of God. That, that you're, you're content with eating the, the temporary pleasures of this world. And that you're not, you've not tasted that the Lord is gracious. Let that be... Um, examine yourself. Um, another thing is not only should, not only should there be a desire for God's word, um, but there should be an understanding that the Bible is the word of God. Um, Christianity, if you want to go to any faith in the world and find facts to back up that faith, not just feelings, but facts, go to Christianity. There's the, there's facts that prove Christianity to be true. Okay. But I want to make this statement that even without um, even without all the evidences that we have to show Christianity is true, um, we believe we believe in the Word of God, not because you could show us all the facts. If somebody's been born of God, you have the witness inside of you. You know this, this is the Word of God. You don't need to show me all of the evidences. The witness is inside of me. I know this Word, it brought the gospel to me. I'm seeing it. The Spirit that's in me is testifying to it. I know that this Word is of the truth. Um, if you've not come to that place in your life where you're drawn to the word and where you just simply believe, you accept, you receive the fact that the Bible is the word of God, uh, that's a big flag that you're not born again. If you have this thing inside of you that this desire to somehow tear down the credibility of the Bible and to, to do whatever it takes to just show that it's not true, even if you have no good reason to do that, it's just coming out of a a heart of, of hatred. I just, I just don't like the Bible. I don't think it's true. I don't believe in it. I, I reject its claims, and we don't need it. Uh, that is a very good chance that you've not been born of that word and that you're not a child of God. So uh, there should be a witness inside of us that we respect the word of God. Uh, if you've been born of the word of God, you would treat a Bible um, like you would treat your parents, that you don't lightly speak evil of your parents that love you. You would never do that. Um, I, my, my kids, the way that they are, and, and that would, that's the last thing that would enter into their heart to speak evil. And that's how our attitude should be towards the Bible. We should love it and respect it and see it as um, we don't worship these pages, but we know that these words are of God and bring us to God, and we, we love it, therefore. Um, another thing Jesus said, um, if, if you are my, my disciples, that you will continue in my word. It will not just be something that will be um, a fad. It will not be a passing thing. You know, you'll, oh yeah, I'll, I'll give the Bible a try and you, you know, good stories and everything. And then it just, it goes away. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that it begins and it continues. I love his word and I'm loving it more and more. So, uh, first thing, what is, what is your attitude towards the word of God? Um, Jesus Christ in the Bible. Um, do you enjoy hearing jokes that, uh, demean Jesus and demean the Bible? Is it not a big deal to you to not know Jesus and not know the Bible? These are evidences that you're not born again. On the contrary, do you love the Word of God? Do you love hearing about Jesus? You want to hear more and more, more of the Word of God. You want to be around those that talk about Jesus, the Word of God. Um, good evidence right there, whether we're saved or not. Um, the second thing we want to look at in evidence, whether we we're truly born of God or not, is in uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14, and it states very simply um, this. He says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Uh, who, who, who are the brethren? Well, the brothers. The brothers are those other people who have been born again, who have been born of God. Uh, if you've been born of God, I've been born of God. That means that we're spiritual brothers. We're brothers in Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. And I should have a special kinship uh, for my brothers in Christ. Now, um, you know, we have physical brothers and sisters. We have physical parents. And even if we don't agree with the way that they live, we have a special kinship with our families. Uh, it's just because we've been born from the same blood. We've been 
uh, we're from the same nest, and, and we, we have that common thing. Um, but this is even deeper now. It's not physical, it's spiritual. It's even deeper to our core that there should be something that happens when we're around other believers, that you just look at them and you say, I just met, I just met you, but I feel like, I, it's not even I feel like I know you, I know that I know you, like we, we are brothers. Uh, I had a man come over to my house a couple days ago. Uh, first time I ever met him, didn't even know uh, who was coming to my house, an electrician. He came over and um, it just, within a few, within seconds, we knew, we knew from each other that we, it, we didn't talk about theology, we didn't talk about our lifestyles, the kind of laws that we practice and everything. There was a spiritual bond, a kinship that was immediate. We knew we're born of God. We know, we know that we know him. Um, do you have that happen when you're around other born-again Christians? Um, not people who follow other religions that say they follow a Jesus, but those who, who believe the Jesus of the gospel, the, the eternal Jesus of the Bible that became flesh, and, and they believed that gospel, the true gospel. Um, do you have an immediate kinship with them um, that you're my brother. I want to be around you. I, I don't necessarily, uh, we don't hate the world. We, we love the world. Uh, we associate with the world. We can even laugh with the world, but there's something different when I'm around born again Christians. Um, you know, where, where does your light, where does your heart draw you to throughout your week, throughout, throughout your months and your years, your days? Does it draw you to the friendship with the world? You know, the, uh, the cookouts with worldly people. Can you, can you have really close and deep friendships with people who do not love Jesus or who never talk about Jesus, who don't love the Bible, who don't, who don't go to church and worship Jesus and, and love on him and hear preaching from his word? You know, people who are not born again, they don't have a relationship with God. Can you find yourself having good friendships with them? Um, the Bible says uh, to love not the world here in 1 John, same pages. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If the, if the love of the world is in you, the love of the Father is not in you. Um, there should be a special kinship between you that your heart draws you to fellowship with the other believers, those that are born again. Um, when you hang out with somebody, when you have a cookout, when, when you get together and, and, and have fun, do you, would you rather do it with those who speak of Jesus often and who respect Jesus and who love the Bible and respect the Bible and not just do these things religiously, but they really truly believe in their heart and they love this. They love, Je they love Jesus. They love the word. <clears throat> this will show you, this is an evidence whether you have been born again or not, whether you're born of God or not. Um, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 10 and verse 25, um, he says, uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Um, as a, as a, a child of God, there should be something in you <clears throat> that drives you to go to church. Um, what is church to you? To you, Do you look at church as something that, uh, I guess I probably should since, you know, I, I, I might want to please God. So I go on Easter and Christmas, you know, and kind of grudgingly go to church or whatever, even if I go weekly grudgingly, <clears throat> that's a good evidence that you're not born again of God. There should be something in us that we want to go. Yeah, I'm tired, but I, I want to go. Yeah, there's things going on in my life, but yes, I want to be there. I want to sing praise to Jesus. I want to hear preaching from the Bible. Uh, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, despise not prophesying. Um, what is your attitude towards preaching? Um, perhaps maybe even right now as you're hearing the Bible being preached, what is your attitude towards these things? Is it, are you constantly um, rejecting it in your mind, suppressing these truths? Are you scoffing at it, trying to find any word to, to trip up these things and to show that it's false? Um, that's despising the preaching of the word of God. That's an evidence that he's not in you. And evidence that he is in you, that you've been born of him, is when you hear the preaching of the word of God, you say, amen, hallelujah, this is the truth. It's being declared, the light of God, the truth of God, the food, it's being pro uh, proclaimed. Um, so that should show you. Um, another, with the brethren, I, I love the brethren, and why? Because um, when I'm around the brothers, and those who really love Jesus, um, you know what they're going to do? Um, they're not going to be condescending. They're not going to have a holier-than-thou attitude. But what they're going to do is they're going to have true love. Um, when I get around the world, I'll be around the world. Why do I want to be around the world? Because I can sin, and they won't say anything to me. They, they, because they, they're sinning too, and, 
and, and they're not going to cast down my sin. They're going to be okay with it, and they're going to make sure that I feel okay with it too. But what happens when I get around the, the brethren? Um, they're going to encourage me not to sin. And if they see me in sin, because they love me, and because they care about my well-being, they're going to come to me, and they're, they're going to have, have love and show me the truth. I want to be around that. I want to be around people who are going to show me God's word and encourage me into holiness, the love of the brethren. Okay, so what is, uh, what is your attitude towards the church and to true Christians and the preaching of the word of God and, and the desire for conversation about Jesus? That's a good indication of where you stand with God, whether you've been born again or not. Um, so the first thing we see is, um, what is your attitude towards Jesus and towards the Bible? Secondly, what is your attitude towards um, other born-again Christians? And lastly, um, what is your attitude towards the Holy Spirit of God? Uh, we, we've seen that the Holy Spirit, that He is not just a force like wind. He's not an impersonal force like electricity. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's the third person of the Godhead. He is the invisible Spirit of God that comes and lives inside of those who've been born again. The Bible says that we've been born um, of regenerated by the Holy Spirit of God. We are temples, and there's certain spirits that live inside of every person. There's, evil, there's either the Holy Spirit or there's evil spirits that live inside of people. So who is in you, and who do you love? The whole, there's a reason why the Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit, because what the Holy Spirit does is he's striving to bring holiness into our life, sanctification. I want to read some scriptures here as we jump into this. Um, when we talk about holiness and cleansing and purity and righteousness, um, do I love those things? Even if I sin, even if I sin, what is the attitude of my heart when I sin? Do I love my sin and am I trying to cover up my sin and, and am I okay with my sin? Or is there another witness in the counsel of my heart inside of me that's saying to me inside of me, you're wrong, you're rotten, you're miserable, you're a wicked person, you're corrupt, you're dirty, you're defiled, God's not happy with you, and you need to be cleansed. Um, what is your attitude towards that, that witness? Uh, listen to here in, in Hebrews chapter number 12. He says in verse number 5, um, you've forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Uh, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he, God, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness." So these scriptures are bringing us into something here that um, I have children and I discipline my children daily, give instructions to my children, follow through with those instructions. When they're disobedient, there's correction, um, there's rebuke, and it's because I love them and I'm wanting to see them grow up into mature, righteous individuals. Same thing's true with God. Uh, I, don't, I don't do that with other people's kids. I do that with my kids daily and very intimately into their life. Now, how is, your, how is your relationship with God? Is God at work like that in your life? Is there a daily instruction from God in your life and rebuke from Him from the Spirit of God inside of you? When you sin, uh, it could be something big or it could even be something very small. You, you, it's something inside of you saying you should not have done that. You've sinned against God. That's why it's wrong. It's evil. You're, you're, you're not right. You need to get right. You need to repent. Is, is that evident in your life? Is it there? Or do you kind of feel like, you know what? I don't really feel like God's necessarily you know, telling me I'm a bad person. And I, I kind of feel like a good person. I don't, I don't think I'm a bad person. And, you know, yeah, of course, you know, we all, we all do bad things. And, you know, yeah, I guess I feel bad about it a little bit. But search your own heart. You know in and of yourself whether there's that true, deep um, 
uh, awareness and, and sorry? Do you feel sorry for your sins or not? Can you see God working at, at work in your life? Um, this, is, this is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is in you. He's constantly wanting to purge you from sin and to set you more apart to Jesus. And it's, it's also, we were, we were talking before uh, about Jesus and the Bible and the brethren. It is the work of the Holy Spirit inside of us that's pointing us constantly to Jesus and to the Bible and, and to the brethren and, and to purity and to holiness, to sanctification. Is that work going on inside of your life? If not, that's a good chance um, that... You're not a child of God. Um, along with this, and the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 16, um, it says that we, as many as are led by the, the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It says the Spirit of God testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. Um, the Spirit of God is inside of us that's constantly, is continually giving us assurance that we are the children of God. He shows us through, through um, th things that happen in our life, things that people say, examples that happen in our life. You know, I had this problem come into, to, into my life. Um, I thought it was a, a big deal, but now through it all, um, you know, I see how God was working that in my life. The Spirit's testifying, look, this is, the Spirit says, look, you see that what just happened? That was God. That was, that was your father telling you that he loves you. He's, he's concerned for you. He just wants to cheer you up, whatever the situation is. You look around at creation. The Holy Spirit's testifying. It's screaming out to you, not um, evolution, but it's, it's the Spirit's screaming out. Look at God. Look at God everywhere. Look at creation. Look at his handiwork. Look at how events are happening through the eyes, through seeing God involved in all that. Um, all of these things are, uh, are evidences that we're Christians or not, that we're children of God or not. Uh, somebody said before, uh, you know, a pig, they love to roll around in the mud, um, but not sheep. Sheep don't like to roll around in the mud. Good question. Um, are we a pig or are we a sheep? The Bible says those who believe in Jesus, that he's the shepherd, that they're the sheep. Um, before I was a Christian, I could roll around in the mud and I loved it. I didn't mind being in the mud. I, I loved being in it. Yeah, I might have felt, you know, just bad because somebody was watching or whatever, but I loved it. Um, but since I've been born again, now that I'm a sheep, even if I do, even if I do, when I do roll around in the mud, I don't love it anymore. The same things that I used to do, I, I do them, but the, the real witness is not in what I do, not in the actions that I do, but in the, in the witness in my heart. Do I love this or not? I want to get this dirt off of me. I don't want to be in there anymore. I want to be in the pastures with the Savior. What is the witness? The Holy Spirit um, will change your heart in your relationship with sin. You will not be able to love sin the way that you used to. You will, you'll despise sin and you will want to flee from it. You will desire to be absolutely pure and holy and to be freed from sin. That ultimately you'll have this desire inside of you. Uh, I can't wait until I'm out of this world, until my body is changed. I can't wait until I don't have to deal with, um, with cursing and lying and falsehood and, and lust and, and everything that is corrupt and, and destroys my life. I can't wait until those things are gone. And the only thing that's true in my life is holiness and purity and Jesus and the word of God and his kingdom. Okay, so um, based on these things, uh, in your own heart, examine yourselves. Um, are you passing the test um, do you love Jesus or not? Do you love the Bible or not? Do you love the brethren or not? Do you love holiness or not? Again, all of these things, we're not talking about your actions. We're not talking about what you do. We're talking about what, where is your heart in all of these things? Where is it pushing you towards? Where is it drawing you to? Okay, so these are the evidences of um, whether we know him or not. And there's, there's many more, but these are, these are the core. These are the, the heart things right here. You should be able to look at your life and say, you know what? Yes. Um, and I, I look at my own life as well. I can look at a point in time where before um, November 8th, 2005 was when I was saved. Before that, there was no Jesus. There was no Bible. There was no church. There was no longing for holiness in my life. And I can look at that day when, um, when I called out, to, when I cried out, I repented of my sins, embraced God's Son, uh, Jesus Christ as my Savior. I was born again of His Spirit, and something happened inside of me that night. I, I wasn't striving to be religious, and that's been 10 years now. And I'm not wanting to be religious. I'm not, you know, trying to 
do religious things. I'm not trying to impress other people. Uh, sincerely from my heart. The things that I used to do, even if I do them, I don't want to do them anymore. Um, I used to have friends that loved to do certain things and to talk certain ways. That's not, that's not what I love to do anymore. There's these people over here that are speaking of God and of Christ and they're involved in serving God. Yes, that's where I fit in. And prayer, wow, never prayed before, but now um, I, I want to pray about everything. I want to make sure that my Father in Heaven is involved in my life and that I'm doing His will and not my own. Um, so what is, uh, what, is, what is your heart saying? Are you a child of, of God tonight? Um, we pray, and, and God's desire is that, that you're not a reprobate, that you're not a castaway, that you're not rejected, that you're not failing the test. Um, but if you are failing the test, um, today is the day of salvation, right now. now. Now is the time when God is accepting. Um, he's, he's raising up, he's preserved his word, he's raising up those who will declare his word, and tonight, right now, um, wherever you are, um, cry out to Jesus. The Bible says, um, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, right now, wherever you are, uh, call, out, call out to Jesus from the depths of your heart. God, I, I'm hearing these things, and uh, the Spirit is not bearing witness with me. I, I know I'm not a child of God. I, I'm, I'm corrupt. I, I'm of my father, the devil, and, and I love doing the things that he loves doing. I love doing the things that I want to do, and I don't care. Um, but, but I believe, and you're showing me tonight, God, I believe that you can change me, and, and it's through you, Jesus. I confess my sin to you. I, I'm a wicked person. I'm not good. I don't know you, but I, I know that the way is through you, Jesus. Please save me. Wash away my sins. Make me a child of God. Um, cause me to be born of your spirit. Give me a love for Jesus, a love for the word of God, a love for the brethren, a love for holiness. I call upon you, and I trust in your word to be saved tonight. And um, please help me to love you as you have loved me. I pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Uh, amen. If, uh, if, if tonight you, you're coming to Jesus, praise God. You can have assurance. Um, now in your life and your attitude towards these things, um, God will show you. It'll, the Spirit will bear witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. Um, don't worry if you sin. Uh, we should not sin. And, and I think that's what we're going to talk about um, next week. Um, but uh, you should not sin. But if you do, you don't need to be afraid. Um, your Father loves you. You have an advocate, Jesus Christ. So rejoice tonight. Uh, glad to have everybody with us. We'll see you again next week. Understanding the Gospel, Wednesday, 8 o'clock p.m. God bless you.